Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. So today what I have for you is the national automobile scrippage policy as well as the highlights from the Independence Day speech of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So what are the things, schemes, initiatives or new announcements made on the Independence Day? All of that we will be discussing here. Apart from this, do you know that recently four sites from India have got the Ramsar, Ramsar sites tab? This makes the total number of Ramsar sites in India 46. So this is another big news that we have. Also, we will be discussing about the community forest rights. So there is a state that has become the first state in India to grant the community forest rights to the urban areas. All of this sounds very interesting, right? So stay tuned till the end of this video because this is going to be a very useful, very important as well as interesting video for all of you. So let's begin. But before that, if you haven't subscribed, then do subscribe and hit the bell notification and you can join this Telegram group as well. Uh, here you will get the free PDF of this session. Okay. So the very first question that we have belongs to the National Automobile Scrippage Policy. National Automobile Scrippage Policy provides various in incentives for the vehicle owners for scrapping their private and commercial vehicles which are more than 20 and 15 years old respectively. This includes the scrap value for the old vehicle which is expected to be around 5 to 6 percent of the price of a new vehicle, a road tax rebate of up to 25 percent for new personal vehicles, and 15% for new commercial vehicles as well as a 5% discount against the scraping certificate. All of these have been proposed under the policy. For the government vehicles, it proposes mandatory scraping of vehicles which are older than dash years. So first of all, the thing is that this policy applies only on the four wheelers. So the government vehicles, the four-wheeler government vehicles, which are older than 15 years, need to be scrapped under this new national automobile scrapage policy. So let's have a look at this policy because this policy is going to have a greater impact on the carbon dioxide emissions from the transport. Guys, before moving on to this policy, I would like to ask a question from you that you have to mention in the comment section below. So, BS 6 emission norms, so Bharat stage 6 emission norms for vehicles, for, uh, so these norms were adopted by India and before these norms there was BS 4 emission norms. Your question is that on which country's emission norms model is this BS 6 emission norms model staged or we can say on which country's emission norms is this uh, BS6 emission norm based. This is your question that you have to mention in the comment section below. Now let's move on to the policy and discuss it in detail because it is going to be very relevant for your ESI also. Both phase 1 and phase 2. Okay, so the very first thing that we have is the policy recommends fitness test for private and commercial vehicles that are more than 20 and 15 years old respectively. In the absence of a fitness certificate, registration of such vehicles will be automatically cancelled. Now, what do you need to remember from this statement? This limit for private vehicles, it is 20 years. For commercial vehicles, it is 15 years, both owned, owned by the private entities. Okay. Everything else is just for understanding purpose. Next is it further recommends mandatory scraping of all government vehicles that are more than 15 years old but is applicable only on four wheelers. This we have already covered. Fitness, fitness test will be done at government certified fitness centers, appointments for which can be made online, test reports will be generated online, also scrapage can be done anywhere in the country irrespective of the place of vehicle registration. Now what do you need to remember from this statement? Nothing. This is just for understanding. Okay. So for understanding purpose, I hope that you have understood it. You can just scrap your vehicle irrespective of the place from where you have registered that vehicle. 
that is the crux and very easy to understand next comes incentives so this is the most important part of this policy which has a lot of percentages that can be asked in your examination so the first point is that the scheme also proposes several incentives for the owners so that they can uh, go for the scrapping this includes the scrap value for the old vehicle which is expected to be around 5 to 6% of the price of a new vehicle obviously if you are going to scrap your vehicle you will get something in return you will get the consideration in return so this is something like kabar when you uh, sell your uh, uh, sell your kabar of the house you get the money in return so this is the same concept you will sell your vehicle and then you will get money in return so that vehicle would, would be the scrap scrap is kabar additionally a road tax rebate of 25 percent for new personal vehicles 15 percent for new commercial vehicles as well as a five percent discount against the scrapping certificate all of these benefits will be provided for scrapping the vehicle so if you have an old car which is more than 15 years old or sorry more than 20 years old if you are using it for your personal purpose if you are using it for commercial purpose then 15 year old and you have to do the scrapping of that vehicle you have to sell it uh, in the scrap then you will get all these benefits if you possess the scrapage certificate registration fees of the new vehicle will also be waived off so this is another bonus for you guys so go and do the scrapping of your vehicles whenever this uh, policy comes on the ground this is the very important point again because this is stating the potential of this policy so the potential is to get investments worth 10,000 crore in this in this sector and create 50,000 jobs so here what is written is the benefits okay so let's have a look at those benefits because they are very basic obvious benefits and no question can be framed on these points so i'm just quickly have uh, going to have a look at these points so the first point is that india has a goal of clean and congestion free convention convenient mobility the policy will policy will help in modernization of vehicles removing unfit vehicles from the roads because as the vehicle gets older it becomes more emit, basically it emits more carbon dioxide okay so it is very friendly towards carbon emission reduction participation of the industry is important whether ethanol hydrogen fuel or electric mobility government will support industry in every way possible so these are the uh, statements because scrapage ke liye the infrastructure will be developed with the help of private players okay and when once the vehicle is scrapped then what will the what will the company do with the scrap will it sell it in different different parts no it is going to remodel that part recycle that car or any vehicle and fit in the new equipment new technology into that vehicle and that vehicle will again become the recycled and then it will be sell it will be sold for as a new vehicle so that is all uh, that will be done under this national automobile scrapage policy basically it is largely for scrapage not about the recycling it is about the scrapage so here again in these two uh, pictures you can clearly see the basic points so you can just read them on your own and if you find anything difficult then you can ask me now the waste to wealth so this is what i told you so from the waste to wealth so the scrap that the companies will get they will recycle it or remodel it reprofit it so that it can become the new vehicle and it can be sold at the new price okay and this will make the automobile industry prosperous as well as efficient carbon emission be come hoga isse because if the new technology is fitted into the new vehicle or into the old vehicle then it will become efficient okay so that was all about the national automobile scrapage policy i hope that you have understood the policy well all the percentages the rebates or the year is important okay so that you have to remember so from here onwards three questions are from the highlights of the independence day 
speech so first we will be reading out the questions and giving you the answer and then i will take you to the highlights of independence day speech the very first question is during the independence day 2021 speech of prime minister narendra modi he announced that 75 bande bharat trains will connect different parts of the country by the year will this plan be completed so during his speech at the independence day which was his eighth independence day speech do remember this thing okay so he announced that from the 75th azadi ka amrut mahotsav from 75th uh, this azadi ka amrut mahotsav that we observed recently till 75 weeks till the completion of 75 weeks this will be completed this initiative will be completed so 75 bande bharat trains will be connected across the india will be uh, provided across the india so the right answer is 2023 bande bharat are the indigenous semi high speed railway rails that were developed in india only and the first train was inaugurated in 2019 also named as train 18 Can you tell me this train eighteen runs between which two states? This is your question that you have to tell me. Which two stations? Also, you can answer in the comment section. When does India observe Partition Horrors Remembrance Day? August fourteen. So this is the day uh, on which India and Pakistan part, uh, parted, and this day is also observed as Pakistan's Independence Day in Pakistan. And from in in India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced that from now onwards we will be celebrating this day. We will be observing this day as Partition Horrors Remembrance Day in order to honor the sacrifices of the people who sacrificed their lives, property, and what not during the partition. So that was another announcement. Next is how much is the corpus of PM Gati Shakti Plan? so this is the infrastructure plan under which infrastructure will be developed modernized infrastructure will be developed jobs opportunities will be provided to the youth as it was said by the prime minister narendra modi so this plan was announced but details of this plan have not been given yet the government itself said that this plan will be launched soon so the details related to related to this will be launched soon however the budget of this plan is already revealed so the budget is rupees 100 lakh crores 1 trillion okay now comes the highlights the first thing is that we want to become independent in energy india will become independent in energy before completing the 100 years of independence that it Twenty forty seven. So before twenty forty seven, we will be becoming energy independent. India has moved towards electric mobility, and work is underway on hundred percent railway electrification. So this is also another work that is under undergoing right now, and the aim is to become net zero carbon emitter by twenty thirty. this is again a very ambitious plan that the government has set by 2030 india aims to become a net zero carbon emission country this is a very important announcement made by the government there are high chances that a question can be framed out of this announcement in your nabard phase 1 ga exam or esi theek hai so government has announced to supply fortified rice to poor by 2024 the rice distributed to the poor under every government program will be fortified fortified means modified so that the rice that contains only minimal amount of nutrient can be added with other micronutrients so micronutrients will be added to the fortified rice so they are basically the uh, not completely synthetic but they are modified rice okay so fortified rice will be provided to the poor people by 2024 to address the problem of malnutrition and lack of micro micro nutrients out of the 15 states identified for this scheme central scheme on fortified rice and its distribution via public distribution system 
five states are implementing it in one district each on a pilot basis so what, what which are those five states andhra pradesh gujarat maharashtra tamil nadu and chhattisgarh so they are distributing fortified rice through their in their one identified districts through their public distribution system next announcement again a very progressive announcement i would say sainik schools have been open for the girl child as well till now they were only for the boys so girl child can also take admission in sainik schools the thing that you need to know about sainik schools is that this was conceptualized in 1961 by the then defense minister v k krishna menon to prepare boys for the national defense academy and indian naval academy there are 33 sainik schools in india at present and ministry of defense is planning to establish 100 more 100 more boarding sainik schools in the ppp mode that is public private partnership mode and this is an extra information no need to mug up this fact this is just for your information purpose that the sainik schools rimc and five rms contribute to 25 to 30% of officer cadet to nd and ina next announcement is we have already discussed this thing the point that we did not discuss is this railways gearing to roll out at least 10 of them by 2022 by august 2022 10 of the vande bharat trains will be launched which will link 40 cities in india by 2022 okay in february hyderabad from this medha got the contract for supplying electrical systems for the 44 bharat vande bharat train guys vande bharat mission was launched during the covid pandemic can you tell me the purpose of this mission various missions were launched by the government of india to help the indians who are stranded in other countries so i have given you a very big hint related to this mission so do tell me this mission was launched for which purpose okay basically i am asking you the exact purpose the next thing is pm dati shakti plan so uh, as i told you that the details will be launched 100 crore 100 lakh crores is the package and this aims to create national infrastructure uh, along with creating the employment opportunities for youth partition horror remember remembrance day we have discussed this is important national hydrogen mission so it was announced in union budget of 2021 to 2022 it will enable production of green hydrogen okay green hydrogen is the hydrogen which is developed which is created by using the renewable energy hydrogen will be blended with compressed natural gas for use as a transportation fuel as well as industrial output to sorry input to refineries and more details on it are still awaited because again similar to the pm gati shakti plan this national hydrogen mission is still in the development stage okay so there are no details about both of these plans but as far as this national hydrogen mission plan is concerned do remember all these uh, things because i don't think that there is an extra effort in memorizing these facts this is these are just the general facts the point that you need to know is that the focus will be on green hydrogen from here i would like to ask a question from you indian oil corporation recently set up india's first green hydrogen plant at one of its refineries you have to tell me the place where this first india's first green hydrogen uh, uh, green hydrogen plant has been set up by the indian oil corporation in the comment section below next comes where is thol lake wildlife sanctuary located madhya pradesh gujarat rajasthan maharashtra telangana are in the options out of which gujarat is the right answer so this thol lake
बाधवाना सुल्तानपुर भिंडवासा सो दीज टू आर इन हरियाणा ऑल ऑफ दीज फोर साइट हैव गॉट दी रामसार साइट टैग and remember that these two are in gujarat these two are in haryana and haryana has got by giving these two sites as the ram site tag ram site ramsar site tag these two became haryana's first ramsar site now the total number of ramsar sites is 46 in india okay so that was all ramsar convention on wetlands was adopted in 1971 it came into force in 1975 and the convention was adopted at a place named ramsar in iran that site is called ramsar site oh, sorry ramsar convention on wetland next is which has become the first state to recognize community forest resource rights in an urban area so the right answer is chatisgarh we have often heard about giving the community forest rights to the tribal people in the tribal areas or in the rural areas but this is the first time the community forest rights have been given under the uh, given in the urban area under the forest rights act of 2006 now guys the forest the community forest right resource rights basically empower the local gram panchayats or the gram sabhas to pr protect conserve maintain manage the forest resources so basically the entire forest resource or the forest basically comes under the administration of the gram sabha so the gram sabha that uses that derives its livelihood and the social uh, social what we can say everything is derived from the forest if we see it from the very primitive lens so the community that derives its livelihood from the forest will manage and conserve that forest so that is the benefit of getting the community forest resource right so all the resources will be protected as well okay so do remember this thing no not only exploitation will be done protection will also be there do remember that these rights are given under forest rights act 2006 So guys that was all for today thank you so much for watching the video i hope that you have enjoyed it